The cost of the project is 800,000. It will be depreciated over a five year period on a straight line basis to zero. So the company expects to sell 250 units per year at 20,000 ringgit per unit. So that means this is the selling price. Eh? All right, so this is the selling price per unit, 20,000. And then 250 is the quantity. All right, variable cost is 16,000. Okay, and the fixed cost is 130,000. No salvage value. So no salvage value maksudnya nanti 800 tolak kosong divided by 5, you get your depreciation. Eh? Uh, your required rate of return is 18%. The tax rate is 35%. Uh, calculate the accounting break even, uh, okay. the accounting break even and the cash break even for the project. Eh? So what you need to do first is you need to uh, make sure you have outlined. Uh, let me see. Uh, so make sure you have uh, outlined the uh, data. Eh? Uh, that is given. Jadi, let me see ya. Eh. Madam ada letak ke tidak? Alright, so this is Madam punya data. Uh, so, Johari Berhad, initial outlay is 800,000. Have everybody done it? Kalau ada yang belum buat, I can give you maybe 10 minutes to do it. Or you guys want to go straight to the answers? Can we go straight to the answers? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Alright, so uh, initial outlay 800,000, period 5 years, salvage value is zero, uh, depreciation, so bagi je lima, so you dapat 160,000 per year, selling price 20,000, uh, variable cost 60,000, fixed cost 130,000, uh, required rate of return 18%, tax rate is 35%. Eh? Alright, so calculate the accounting break even. So this formula, you just use the formula that's available in your slides. Okay, so sales minus cost minus depreciation, uh, 1 minus T. Alright, uh, so quantity kita tak tahu dulu because this is the break even punya quantity. So the answer I got is 72.5 for accounting break even. Is it the same as yours? Takut madam yang salah, huh? Uh, can it be round up? Yes, it can be round up to 73 units. So, kalau letak dalam ni, right. sama eh? Alright, so very good. So, kadang-kadang Madam punya jawapan pun mana salah. Okay. Um, so, the next one is the cash break even. So, we follow the formula uh, also in your slides. So, for this one, sales minus cost. K1 minus tax. So you tambahkan balik depreciation eh? because this is cash break even. Alright, so it's equal to zero. Alright, so sales uh, 4,000. Uh, it's actually sales uh, selling price minus variable cost. Eh? Okay, so madam dah kira terus 20 tolak 16. So dah you dapat 4,000. Eh? Minus fixed cost. Okay, times 1 minus tax plus depreciation is 160,000 times tax. Eh? Alright, so the uh, break even is 11 units. Do you get the same answer? Yes, madam. Alright. So the next one is okay. 
Madam tak ingat dah soalan The next question is Calculate the sensitivity of the base case net present value to change in unit tries to 21,000 ringgit. Alright, so uh, you need to do a proforma financial statement. So these are the details for base case and new case. So whereby the price dia bertukar daripada 20,000 to 21,000. Itu saja perubahan. Eh? So yang lain adalah sama. So that is what is meant by the question. And then you do your proforma statements, uh, sales yang berubah. So everything else down here tidak berubah. Eh? Alright, so your variable cost sama, fixed cost sama, your depreciation is also the same. Alright, so you get your EBIT and then taxes, we follow the tax rate of uh, I think it's this one, ah, thirty-five percent, ah. You follow the tax rate of thirty-five percent, okay? Uh, and then you get your net income, and then from your net income, you get your cash flow, ah. So what is your cash flow? Your cash flow is actually your net income, and then you tambahkan balik dengan depreciation, right? So that's your cash flow, ah, uh, ataupun OCF. Your OCF is uh, net income plus depreciation, and then you get you calculate your uh, NP. V. Alright, so you calculate your NPV and then baru you buat you punya sensitivity analysis. Okay, so you kira kan you punya uh, NPV, IRR, your cash flow, uh, your sales is sales dah. And then uh, sensitivity, uh, the new NPV minus the old NPV, uh, the new uh, item minus the old item. Eh? So mine, madam dapat uh, 508.17 Okay Do you guys get the same answer? Yes, madam. Ah, uh, Elister dapat ah. Eh? Alright, Hana dapat. Amar pun dapat. Okay. Ah, uh, yang lain ada tak yang tak dapat the the answer? Ah, uh, sebab yang yang tak dapat the answer tu yang madam nak fokus lah. Because takut nanti you tengok tengok you blur. You you have to try it first. Ah, uh, and then if you get the wrong answer, it's most probably you use the wrong formula. Ataupun you check balik you punya sequence Apabila you mengira tu kadang-kadang the sequence is incorrect Ataupun kadang-kadang yang sepatutnya tolak you terletak tambah and what not lah Semua okay with the answer Okay eh Okay, all right. So uh, it seems like you guys are able to do it. I hope so. Okay, so let's look uh, to the next question. So uh, the next question, Madam, belum habis kira lagi. Uh, let me see. The next question is December. Eh? All right, so December question 2A. A uh, financial analyst for a manufacturer of BMW spare parts is considering using its new engine. The production of the engine can be used over four years with zero salvage value at the end of year four. The project's initial investment is 60,000. Depreciation is straight line. Discount rate is 10%. Eh? So basically, it's 60,000 divided by four. Itu saja dia punya depreciation sebab zero salvage value. The corporate tax rate is 40%. So these are the details. So you are required to calculate the worst case uh, for financial break-even point, the best case for NPV and then the sensitivity eh? All right, of you punya uh, Okay, uh, you punya sensitivity. Uh, given that the fixed cost increases as upper bound fixed cost, all right, and interpret the changes in the figure. 
Alright, so for this one, medium belum habis type. Sekejap eh. Alright, so these are some of the information uh, that we have. Uh, so initial outlay 60,000, period is for 4 years, salvage value is 0, depreciation 60,000 divided by 4, you get 15,000, discount rate 10% and tax rate is 40%. So these are your scenarios, expected scenario, uh, this is the worst case, so that's the first one, uh, and the best case, that will be the next one. Eh? Alright, uh, and then for the third one, uh, sensitivity analysis. So for sensitivity, dia berubah, uh, apa nama, dia punya fixed cost dia berubah menjadi, uh, let me see ya, uh, if the fixed cost increase as upper bound fixed cost and interpret the changes. So basically the fixed cost dia berubah, uh, dia bertambah. Okay. Hmm. Alright, so uh, moving forward, uh, the worst case scenario, uh, we use the financial break-even point. Okay, uh, so first we need to find the OCF. Eh? Alright, so what is the OCF? Uh, Sorry, Madam belum habis type. <laughs> Alright, so uh, for NPV, uh, it's equal to uh, OCF, PVIFA, uh, how many percent? I think it's 10 percent. And then four years, minus dengan initial outlay. Eh? So that's our NPV. Uh, that one is equal to, NPV is equal to zero. So, uh, initial outlay is uh, 60,000. And then, uh, you get your OCF, which is your PVIFA. Alright. So, OCF is equal to 60,000 divided by this value, PBIFA 10% for, you get 3.16999. Alright, so your... Okay. 18,926.04. Uh, okay. Uh, and then you substitute the value, you masukkan dalam. Jadi OCF is equal to um, selling price minus variable cost times Q minus FC uh, times tax plus uh, depreciation times tax. Alright, so you put in this value, Q minus FC, sorry. This one is 1 minus tax. So you should get Q is equal to um, a 
ataupun boleh dibundarkan dia you can say is about for units okay so this is the worst case scenario And then the next one is best case for NPV. So sama juga, NPV is equal to this. So we find our OCF. Equal to selling price minus variable cost uh, times Q minus fixed cost times one minus tax plus depreciation times taxes. All right. So. Uh, we input all the numbers for base best case. You input all the numbers, so you should get thirty nine thousand. All right. So and then you calculate NPV is equal to OCF. Three thousand six to six point one zero. Right, so this is the first answer. This is the second answer, and the third one for Sama juga, first you calculate your OCF. get this amount for OCF and then the new OCF so for the new OCF kita tukarkan fixed cost asalnya is 2000 now dia menjadi 3000 eh? so uh, the same values for the others Q is so, hanya fixed cost ya bertukar menjadi 3000 So the new OCF should be 11,700 Okay And then uh, change in OCF Is equal to The new OCF Tolak the old OCF Divided by The new fixed cost tolak the old fixed cost. Alright, so you get negative 0 0.6. So what does it mean? is your uh, understanding lah. For every ringgit increase of fixed cost, sebab kan tadi the new fixed cost dia bertambah ha? 
the old fixed cost is 2,000. Dia bertambah menjadi 3,000. Alright. So, you want to find the sensitivity. Uh, what happens if your fixed cost increase? So, if your fixed cost increase, change of OCF becomes negative. So, negative maksudnya fixed cost naik, OCF jadi turun. Alright. So, this means that uh, setiap seringgit fixed cost naik, OCF akan turun by 60 cents. Okay. So, these are the answers. Do you get the same answer? Sorry, madam tak nampak banyak. Banyak komen. Okay. Uh, do you get the same answer? Macam madam? Yes, no? So, uh, Madam continue lah ha. Dua orang je jawab. Alistair dengan Atika. <laughs> Alright, so do you guys have any questions about this? Ataupun semua faham? Because nanti some of the questions will come out in your test. I'm assuming your test will be, uh, let me see ya. Uh, Madam akan cuba habiskan. Uh, our chapters Sebab our semester I don't know Dia sampai berapa hari bulan uh, Is it 29 30th 3 hari bulan Julai Something like that So I assume our test 2 Will be on the 29th of June So next week uh, Madam akan habiskan Chapter 11 and 12 Okay uh, And then uh, Kita buat a bit of revision uh, and then you will do your test 2 on the 29. So far so good? Okay. Eh? Alright, so let us go into the next chapter. Which is chapter... Chapter 10. So please remind me to give you chapter 9 and 10 after this. Uh, Club Madam Olehkah dalam you pun, uh, dalam kita pun WhatsApp lah. Alright. So... Uh, this is chapter 10, Dividend Policy. Let me just finish the chapter. Presentation. Is it? 29. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So, that means, uh, can we do your test on a weekend? Macam Maria? Kita orangkah yang Madam Pola test waktu weekend? Eh? But if weekend, it has to be this weekend. No, is it? Next weekend. Next weekend pun boleh. Yes, madam. Uh, so, boleh ha? Alright, so uh, we can do your test maybe on the... Yes? Uh, on the 27th or 28th lah. Apa tak? Oh. Sorry, sorry. Kali lah, madam. Huh? Kalau another week, madam. Another week? That is already the final week. Eh, bukan lah, madam. My last paper will be test 2 IMR on 17 July. 17 July? Yes, test 2 for fin 542 pun 10 July, Madam. Oh, okay. Madam takut tiap ujung Madam si sempat marking. Uh, paling paling akhir Madam dapat break kita orang 4th or 5th of July. Empat atau lima Julai aja Madam dapat break. Because I, uh, I haven't finished, uh, actually I haven't started marking. So... Uh, lepas habis kelas, I'm planning to... Okay, yes. <laughs> Lewat je. Urut besar, Rachel. Itulah <laughs> five bulan lagi. Tak boleh liang, Madam. Okay. Uh, third July habis set. Uh, uh, iyalah, Tek. So... 
Maybe we can do 4 Julai lah. Five lah. Ah, 4 Julai ya? Okay. So your test tu 4 Julai. Uh, Uber lah. <laughs> okay. Lima. <laughs> Lima pun boleh. Matma pun boleh siapa. <laughs> Kita tahu lucu nak je. Uh, okay. Lima hari bulan Julai ya. Okay. Sekejap Madam tulis. Takut Madam lupa. Because this is the subject. The only subject I have that has a test too. Okay. So lima Julai we do pukul apa? Sepuluh pagi? Until dua belas tengah hari. Boleh? Oh, unless you guys have to go to church. Then we can do in the afternoon lah boleh. Oh. Oh okay, ada yang pergi church. Uh, okay, Madam kat 3 petang lah. Mok, 3 p.m. until 5 p.m. What chapter to you, what chapter kelab Madam nanggar balik dulu dalam syllabus? Uh, I can inform you dalam WhatsApp. Okay, so 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Ah. <laughs> ada lagi orang caps lock, beliang ni awak Madam. <laughs> Lucu kita awak. Alright, uh, okay. So... Uh, let's do chapter 10. You guys ready? So uh, this is chapter 10, Dividend Policy. This is going to be very short. It's about 27 slides. Eh? Okay, uh, so basically in this chapter, it tells you how uh, firms pay dividends and repurchase the stock. How do they decide on the payout? Uh, payout controversy, uh, stock dividend and stock splits and other issues. Eh? So this section describes how cash is paid to the shareholders. There are two ways. One is paying cash. So maksudnya let's say kita beli saham Maybank. And then after that Maybank announce, okay they want to give you dividends. So bila dia bagi dividend, it doesn't go into uh, apa nama, uh, nyasik menambahkan kita pun saham lah. Untuk cash dividend, it goes into your bank account. Alright, so that is what it means by cash dividend. So katakan kita ada seribu unit saham and then uh, dividend adalah 10 sen. So kita dapat seratus ringgit lah masuk dalam kita pun bank account. So that is cash dividend. So the other way is repurchasing stock. Eh? So repurchasing stock is slightly different. Alright, uh, so kalau cash dividend yang masuk dalam account Alright, uh, untuk stock dividend, that is repurchase stock lah. Uh, maksudnya, kalau sebelum tu kita ada seribu unit saham, okay, and then yang ada uh, your dividend dalam bentuk saham. Setiap uh, 10 unit, you dapat satu saham. So, seribu unit, you bagi 10, you dapat 100. So, you dapat 100 saham baru. Okay, so after the dividend, uh, dividend announcement and the dividend date, kita akan anggar jumlah unit dividend kita bertambah daripada seribu kepada seribu seratus. Okay, so a firm's board of directors declare the dividend and the payment will be made to all stockholders who are registered at the record date. Uh, stocks are traded with dividends until a couple of days before the record date and then after that, nya akan digelar sebagai X dividend. Maksudnya uh, tarikh rekod ya is tarikh setidaknya akan kira berapa banyak pemegang saham okey untuk diberikan dividend and let's say record date pada 2 hari bulan uh, dividend 6 hari bulan. So kalau nama kita ada pada 2 hari bulan you akan dapat dividend lah 6 hari bulan. Macam ya. Tapi kalau kita beli saham yang pada 3 hari bulan then kita si dapat. Alright? So Tarikh selepas record date nya dikenali sebagai X dividend. So this section distinguish regular, extra, special and liquidity dividend. Eh? Alright, so firms can use cash to repurchase stock. Alright, so what it means is that kadang-kadang ada sesetengah company nya mau beli saham nya balik daripada uh, apa investor. Contoh macam Maxis lah. Maxis last time was publicly traded and then after that Ananda, the owner, decided that dia si mau publicly traded. Dia mau beli balik saham ya. Alright, dia mau pegang semualah basically. So take it private. So yes, boleh. They can repurchase stock. 
Another example is Malaysia Airline. So Malaysia Airline before the disaster of MH uh, 17, I think, uh, or, or MH 370, either either two, uh, it was publicly traded before, and then because of the disaster dua ikat ya berturut-turut menyebabkan saham uh, MAS menjadi terlampau rendah. So this, they decided to take the company private. Eh? So now you cannot buy MAS pun saham anymore. It's owned by Kazanah kalau si silap madam. So there are four ways. One is open market purchase. Nya beli, beli, beli. Another one is tender offer. Alright. Another one is auction. Another one is private nego. Uh, so private nego with a major shareholder. Kalau di Malaysia, uh, major shareholder will be macam EPF uh, and uh, the insurance company and what not lah. So this, they become major shareholder sebabnya pegang sebahagian besar daripada saham di dalam masyarakat dia. Maybe 20%, maybe 30% and what not lah. So many firms offer shareholders automatic dividend reinvestment plan lah. Okay. Uh, stock repurchase sends a positive signal. Why? Uh, the management believe that the current price is low and they are buying back the stock price. And it also sends a positive signal because the management also believe that in the future, the price will go up. Okay, so dividend payment. So there are certain dates, uh, uh, certain terms that we need to know. Declaration date. So it's when the board uh, declare the dividend and it becomes a liability. Why? Because the company now has to pay has to pay dividends. Eh? X dividend date, uh, it occurs two business days before the record date. Eh? Uh, if you buy the stock on or after this date, you will not receive dividend. Eh? Stock price will drop because they will be adjusting to the dividend payout. So date of record is uh, the day where the shareholders are recorded who will receive the dividend payment. Date of payment adalah uh, apabila dibayar. Dolognya guna check. Now is just a bank transfer. Alright, so this is an example. Alright, so katakan T is here. Eh? So this is the X dividend date. The record date is two days before. Alright, so if the company announced three days before, Okay, and then this is the record date. So, kalau nama kita ada, you will receive dividend. Kalau selepas ya, no. You will not receive dividend. So, let's say the stock price is 10 ringgit. Alright, and then let's say dividend is 1 ringgit. So, after that, after the X dividend date, the price will go down. Adjusted. Why? Seringgit dah masuk pocket. Alright, uh, so the stock price will fall by the amount of the dividend given. Eh? If the dividend is one ringgit, the price will drop to nine ringgit on the X dividend date. All right. So the let's say the date of record is twenty second June. Katakan. All right. So therefore, the last day that the holder will be recognized eligible uh, for payment is nineteen June. Ah, uh, so three days before. Eh? So this is just an example. After nineteen June is considered as X dividend. Date, eh? Nyambi dua hari eh? So 22 So bukan tolak dua macam ni lah uh, 21, 20, 19 Madam pun si tahu juga lah <laughs> Alright uh, So uh, how do companies decide on payout So managers are reluctant to make dividend pay uh, changes That may have to be reversed So usually it's a very big deal for companies to decide on dividend payout eh? So in order to risk uh, a reduction in payout so financial executive will smooth out dividend. So what they do is because some investor ni macam tu, invest ada certain investor they focus on uh, dividends. Alright, so nya apa nama nya akan naga company ni yang banyak buat dividend. Alright, but in hand theory lah namanya. Okay, uh, so ada certain companies kalau boleh every year nya mau beri jumlah dividen yang sama. The reason being is that they want to keep this kind of investors. Uh, so the cost of external capital is lower than the cost of a dividend cut. Uh, so that means for certain investors, kalau nyana ga e last year buat dividend seringgit, this year sepuluh sen. So this is a big difference, kan? So what will happen to your stock price? So investors yang ngepong dividend there, what they do is they will sell your stock lah. Nya akan nangga okay prediction nya will be okay this company might uh, not be as profitable as before. All right. So uh, what managers do is that they try to make sure that the dividend amount is almost the same every year. 
Alright. Uh, so rather than reducing dividend, okay, managers would raise new funds to an undertake a pro profitable project. Maksudnya, because dividend to, nya mengurangkan cash di dalam company. Kan? So let's say if the, the company identify a new project they want to do, but rather than using internal funds, because nya dah budget those funds to pay out for dividends, what they do, they borrow lagi. Uh, to fund for new projects. Eh? So uh, generally, firm will buy back stock when they have excess cash eh? ataupun they want to change the capital structure. Okay, so many countries have eased the restriction on stock repurchase and a lot of multinational have repurchased huge amount of stock. Kalau di Malaysia, certain multinational kita ada uh, national interest we call it. So for example, macam Petronas eh? dan anak syarikat Petronas, you will see it might be traded, uh, the, the price might be there in the stock market, but you cannot buy it. Why? Because it's 100% owned by the uh, government. So it could either be owned by the Ministry of Finance or it could either be owned by Hazana. Hazana is the, the government pun investment company. Uh, so, uh, Kalau Malaysia is slightly different lah because kita pun stock market is very very influenced by the government uh, ataupun uh, government related companies. Even EPF uh, is a major trader in the stock market. So EPF is also one of the country pun special institution kan yang handle kita pun pension, duit uh, apa, duit retirement uh, untuk pekerja swasta. Uh, so kalau uh, uh, countries macam US, macam UK, the stock market is more open, all right? Countries macam Malaysia, which is a developed country, it's a small country. You you can see that the stock market, yes, we do have some small investors, but a uh, majority of the trade will be influenced by the institutional investors, macam Hazana, macam uh, EPF, or certain insurance companies and whatnot. Huh? All right, so how uh, the payout controversy, uh, so, according to Modigliali Miller, it's irrelevant. Eh? <laughs> Alright, so the amount of dividend that you give out is also irrelevant to the value of the company. However, there are three schools of thought. Ada tiga, uh, apa nama, tiga parties lah. Uh, one party believe that dividend policy uh, is irrelevant. Tidak penting untuk syarikat. So that is MM lah. MM kan they believe is irrelevant. Bapa banyak kita berhutang ataupun bapa banyak kita sumbangkan modal is irrelevant to the value of the company. Itu MM. Alright. Uh, but there's another party that says that there's a tax effect. Uh, so tax, uh, this party, they prefer low dividend. Why? Because apabila kita mendapat uh, dividend income, Okay, even according to Malaysia, uh, dividend income is tax. You still need to pay tax for the amount you receive from dividends. So, what is the effect? Uh, kalau dari segi finance, we call it a double taxation effect. Why double taxation? Sebab for the companies yang issue out the dividend, the company sudah pay tax. Kan? Before they give out dividends, they are, they are already paying tax. And then for the investor who receive the dividend, the investor also have to pay income tax. Uh, so this party, the leftists, they, they say that because of tax, tax effect, we prefer low dividend. But there's also another party that says that we like high dividend. So this is the bird in hand theory. Eh? So the right is, so they say that they prefer generous payout. They suka dividend besar, besar. Alright, so uh, this one is based on the bird in hand theory. Eh? And then there are certain investors, natural clientele, eh? there, there are certain investors memang they suka dividend. Alright, uh, because they want to see the money now. Uh, so kalau in the stock market, you have to see lah certain, uh, if you, uh, apa nama? Uh, if you look at uh, certain types of investors, even Warren Buffet, eh? Warren Buffet, dia suka banyak dividend. Alright, uh, and then they also go for uh, apa nama uh, capital gain as well. The reason being is that dividend is the money you get now. Kan? It's the money that is announced during the year. So, uh, you, it's, it's also a part of income eh? for the investor. Alright? Uh, so, in um, uh, uh, according to this theory, market imperfection 
uh, may upset the MM argument, all right, and dividend is a way to show investors that yes, the firm has enough money to pay you, eh? all right, the firm is profitable enough to, to pay the investors. All right, so this is the leftist. So the leftist cakap, rugi bagi dividend. Rather than dividend, bagus dia reinvest the money and it will cause capital gain. Menyebabkan harga saham naik. So you will see certain tech, technological firms, uh, uh, macam Apple, you know, uh, uh, they don't give out uh, lots of dividend. Uh, they focus on capital gain. Throughout the 20 years, if I'm not mistaken, they only give out sekali saja dividend. Uh, tapi harga saham dia naik memang tinggi. Uh, so the lefties, they say that if the company have a choice to reinvest the, the, the money, put it into profitable projects, it will go uh, cause the company punya value to go up. All right. Uh, and then because of the tax system, kita jimat lah, kita tak payah bayar double taxation. Seperti orang yang selalu menerima dividend. Alright, so ini dia punya argument. Ah. And then orang yang di tengah-tengah, alright, ah, so the middle of the road. Ah. So traditional and leftist argument hold the supply of dividends is fixed. If the investor favor high payout, then firms would pay out more. Alright, uh, and then after that dividend policy would be irrelevant. Ah. However, this does not explain why a lot of investors one high dividend and uh, even though dia terpaksa bayar tax sekali lagi. Uh, so this is just investor punya behavior lah. Alright, so because the stock market is affected by investor behavior, so jenis-jenis investor ni lain, macam-macam uh, uh, jenis, ada investor yang risk averse, they don't like risk, ada investor yang suka risk. Uh, so dia menyebabkan macam-macam lah pergerakan di dalam saham, stock market. Eh. So um, since 1986, tax disadvantage of dividends is reduced. Okay, uh, then maybe it is easier to suppose that there's a large clientele of investors who are happy with high payout. Eh. So in the US, shareholders return a tax twice. Macam kita lah, in Malaysia is the same. Because company yang bayar dividend tu dia kena bayar tax and investor pun kena bayar tax eh, for the in, uh, dividend income received. Alright, uh, in Germany pula, investors are taxed at a higher rate on dividend than on capital gain. Uh, why? Because most probably, they punya income tax rate is higher lah. Okay, so corporations are taxed at a higher rate on retained earnings than on distributed dividends. This is a split level system. Maksudnya, dia tak nak syarikat menyimpan dia punya keuntungan. Uh, so, Germany, because Germany punya tax system is quite high, eh? dia agak tinggi. So, everything dia kena tax lah. Uh, however, in Australia pula, shareholders are taxed on dividends but they get a tax credit. Maksudnya, uh, akan tengok dulu berapa tax yang sudah dibayar oleh syarikat itu tadi. So, jumlah tax yang sudah dibayar akan ditolak from the dividend tax yang dibayar oleh shareholders. Eh. This is called a, an imputation tax system. Alright, so dividends matter of course. So the value of the stock is based on the present value of future dividends. Eh. Uh, so, uh, apa, cost of equity. Eh. Uh, so the dividend growth model, the process of valuing share price will be determined by how much dividend the company pays. So clientele effect, some investors prefer low dividend payout and they will buy stocks in companies that offer low dividend payouts. Some investors prefer high dividend payout and will buy stocks in companies that offer high dividend payout. Eh? So why? Uh, why do these investors prefer low payout? Why? Sebab dia dah kaya. <laughs> Alright, so dia dah kaya jadi jumlah tax yang dia bayar tu tinggi. Kan? So apabila jumlah tax yang dia bayar tu tinggi, makin bertambah dividend, makin tinggi lah, makin banyak tax yang dia kena bayar. So some of that is because of the tax effect. They prefer the capital gain rather than dividend. Alright? And another one is flotation cost. Eh? Because flotation costs are high, alright, uh, then a low payout will decrease the amount of capital that needs to be 
raise. Uh, meaning, uh, rather than paying dividends, the company can use the cash to invest uh, daripada dia berhutang di sana sini lah. Alright, dividend restriction, debt contracts might limit the percentage of income uh, that can be paid out as dividends. Uh. And then the next one, high dividend please. Uh, so, uh, some investors, they prefer high dividend. Why? Uh, the type of investors lah, especially orang yang sudah berpencen. You will notice, uh, if you guys go to broker companies, uh, macam uh, in Kuching, we have Kenanga, eh? KN and Kenanga, for example. Uh, if you go to their uh, broker punya lobby, uh, you will see a lot of retirees uh, sitting there. Dia tengoklah the screen. Eh? Uh, why? Satu sebab retiree, dia tak pandai IT sangat. So, they do not... In- <laughs> Uh, they do not, apa nama, uh, kalau kalau kita, then we have the app, kan? Uh, kita ada software, kita tengok from home. For them, they go there physically and they tengok. And another thing is, they want to talk to the friends lah. Okay, they go there, tengok saham-saham yang naik and turun, talk to the brokers and whatnot. So, you will see that uh, there are a number of the investors uh, in the stock market are actually retirees. Satu, they have cash to invest, eh, daripada duit pesaran and what, uh, what not, they, they invest those money. So, they prefer high dividends. Why? Uh, high dividends mean they have more cash now. And then takkan dia nak tunggu lama-lama sebab dia dah tua. Eh? Alright. Uh, so, these groups are prohibited from spending the principal. Eh? So, those with trust funds and endowments. Uh, satu lagi because uncertainty. Kan? You might expect that the stock price to go up in the future. Sekali tengok dia go down because of many issues. Eh? COVID-19 lah, economic recession lah, what not. So, because of uncertainty, there's no guarantee that in the future prices will go up. Might as well take the dividend now. Eh? And then satu lagi, uh, there might be dividend exclusion for certain corporations. So, some companies do not need to pay tax. For example, sekiranya kamu invest dalam ASB contohnya, so dividend yang kamu dapat daripada ASB setiap hujung tahun tu, you do not need to pay tax. Uh, so that is one of the special privilege lah kita ada. Implication of the clientele effect. Uh, so what do you think will happen if a firm changes the policy? So of course, when they change the policy, the type of client will change as well. Yang suka dividend tu akan lari, okay, yang tak suka dividend akan datang. So, uh, if this is the case, does dividend policy matter? Yes, of course lah. Dividend policy matters a lot to investors. Eh? Alright, if a firm changes the policy, it will just have different investors. Eh? But technically, theoretically, dividend policy should not affect the value of the stock. So, stock tu akan bertukar tangan from one type of investor to another. Eh? Alright, so dividend irrelevance theory. So, the this theory mengatakan it doesn't matter. Alright, whether a uh, company to issue dividend or not, the stock price would be the same. Uh, so, this is the theory lah. Uh, dividend policy is the decision to pay dividends versus simpan duit tu di dalam syarikat. So, in theory, if the firm reinvest the capital now, it will grow and it can pay higher dividends in the future. So, let's uh, see an example. Consider that a firm can either pay out dividends of 10,000 ringgit per year for the next two years or they bayar 9,000 this year. Okay, baki 1,000 tu they invest balik. Next year, they bayar lagi besar. 11,120 ringgit. Nah. So, uh, investors require a 10%. So, market value with constant dividend, you can see, and market value with reinvestment, it is the same. Okay, how do you get this value? This value is simply present value of the two figures with the discount rate uh, ataupun the return rate. So, you will see the market value of the company is the same. If the company... was not concerned with the firm's dividend policy since uh, kalau dividend policy tu berubah dia boleh jual saja saham dia eh alright eh stop uh, christeline uh, stop which part madam punya slide ke ataupun tak dapat dengar
Uh, yang lain dapat dengar? Oh, line dia stuck. Alright. Uh, okay, dah okay eh. Okay. So, uh, this is another example. Uh, it's okay, we're almost towards the end of the chapter. Alright, case one, the company announces uh, dividends in year one. Alright, and year two. Eh? So, it's, it's the same example tadi, cuma tukar sikit dia punya values. Uh, the company announces dividend for case two, 100, 100 equal amount. Eh? So, Mr. X prefers dividend 100, 100. So, boleh tak dia, dia buat rearrangement of dia punya portfolio. So yes, you can do manually. Ini maksudnya DIY ya, ataupun homemade. Alright, uh, dia buat manually. So what he does is, dia boleh jual the difference. Okay, sebab dia nak 100-100 constant tadi. Dia jual the difference tu ataupun dia invest balik. So dia invest, dia beli saham baru lagi. Like, uh, tambah, tambahan. Alright, and then the dividend income tu and then plus the reinvestment income. Okay, so then still get 100. Okay, so this is what it means. And in this case, company announces sama dividend. Tapi Mr. Z dia suka mula-mula banyak, lepas tu sedikit. Uh, so what they do is, dia boleh jual jual saham tu and dapat balik duit sekarang. Okay, and in the next year, dia dapat saham yang lebih rendah. So these are just two examples uh, to show you that uh, for an investor, uh, they can do whatever they want. If they want more dividends, uh, uh, then they can buy more shares. If they want less dividends, they can sell the shares. They get the money now. Uh. This is the example. Uh, so in this example, it just shows that if the uh, investor nak more dividends, then beli lagi banyak saham. Lah. If the investor decide, okay, I want the cash now, tak apa next year less dividend, then what they do, they sell the share now. All right. Uh, stock dividend and stock split, split. Uh, this one is basically sama ada company tu bayar dividend dalam bentuk saham. Alright, uh, so pay additional shares of stock instead of cash. So they increase the number of outstanding shares. Alright, uh, so of course uh, you will get some dividends. Cuma uh, in the future your profit will be slightly lower. Sebab the number of outstanding shares dah bertambah. Huh? Uh, another one is stock split. Dia macam stock dividend tapi dia kira uh, mengikut ratio. Okay. Uh, so sama eh. Stock dividend or stock split sama. Both will reside, re will result in the stock price going down. Eh? Okay. Uh, some companies uh, they want to reduce the stock price. For example kalau you tengok macam uh, Nestle punya saham in Malaysia is the most expensive share that we have. If I'm not mistaken it's about 100 plus ringgit. Now, Madam tak pastilah. Tapi last time it was about 100 plus ringgit. So, they might initiate something like this to reduce or to lower the stock price. Eh? Uh, other issues, dividend and uh, signal. So, there might be asymmetric information and signaling uh, theory. Of course, uh, for example, managers have more information about the health of the company. Sometimes, they issue out dividend. It's just they want to give out a signal that the company is doing well. Alright, uh, so that one is signaling theory. Walaupun sebenarnya kalau tengok dia punya income statement or balance sheet, it might not be true. Kan? Tapi dia nak bagi signal sahaja eh. They have enough cash. So, wallahu Wallahualam. Alright, so in signaling theory, it is assumed that dividend announcement could transmit the inside information of the financial condition of the company and influence the behaviour of the investors. Uh, whether positively or negatively. Yeah? Alright. Uh, other issues um, uh, for signaling theory, uh, if the dividend is increased, uh, so it, it uh, shows to the investor, oh, the company has more cash now. Kan? Uh, they can afford to pay more. Okay. Or expectation that in the future we might receive more. Uh, so increasing the value of the company and it's a signal of a healthy growing firm. Tapi if dividend decreases, uh, ada certain companies which are doing really really bad eh, in the stock market. <laughs> For example, macam Amanah Sam Sarawak, eh, Asal, uh, is doing really really bad. The stock price is low, dividend pun almost non-existent. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, what signal does it show? It shows that the company is not being managed well. For example, uh, ataupun the company might have some cash flow issues. Ataupun dari segi perkembangan, you do not expect as an investor that the company is going to uh, apa nama expand. 
uh, improve the situation. Uh, uh, or it might also be a signal that the firm is having financial difficulties. Alright, so uh, kita dah habis chapter 10. After this, I'll give you chapter 9 and chapter 10 slides in WhatsApp. Alright, uh, uh, Nestle stock masih mahal lah. Uh, mesti Basil nak beli Nestle stock. Alright, <laughs> tak apalah untuk orang uh, yang uh, rakyat marhain macam kita tak apa. Kita beli produk Nestle saja. Beli Milo, beli Nestum. Eh? Okay, so, <laughs> so class um, sampai sini saja kita punya Google Meet. Uh, after this Q&A kita akan sambung dalam uh, WhatsApp. Alright. So question and answers we continue in WhatsApp, yeah? Okay, madam. Alright. See you class.